I don't think I have ever gotten this many requests to cover a story here on the channel, and it makes perfect sense because the analog pocket is my dream Game Boy. I want this thing so bad. Let's talk about it. All right, full disclosure, I am super busy this week, so I didn't write a script for this video. I'm not reading off of a teleprompter like I usually do here. So this video is going to be more off the cuff, perhaps a little bit rambly, and I hope you guys can bear with me. Analog is a company based out in Seattle that specializes in recreating older consoles for modern day HDTVs. You are probably familiar with their previous offerings because they sent these consoles out to every retro gaming YouTuber I can think of. Well, I guess except for one. There was the NT Mini, which was basically an HD version of the NES. The Super NT, which you guessed it, it's an HD Super NES. And I believe this one is the most recent one they put out, the Mega SG, which is essentially a Sega Genesis that runs on modern day televisions. These HD consoles run on actual cartridges, which is pretty cool, and they don't emulate. They run on something called FPGA, which stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays, which are very specialized computer chips that can be arranged into one-to-one -one recreations of classic hardware. So you get a much higher fidelity in your retro gaming experience. You're not going to see things like layers that don't load or input lag or the sound being a little iffy, the emulation speed going on and off. Like, there's all these problems. People who emulate are aware of these issues and some people don't do emulation because they can't handle that difference in experience. I know some people who just don't touch emulators because of that. And on these consoles made by analog, you're not going to run into these issues. Understandably, they are a little on the pricey side and a lot of people don't understand what's the point of spending that much money on something when you're going to have to track down cartridges to actually play on when emulation is essentially free. And I use quotes because, you know, it's not exactly legal to be downloading these games, but you know, people do it anyway. So Analog just announced the Analog Pocket, which is basically something I've been wanting Nintendo to do for so long, which is essentially a Game Boy Classic. Nintendo put out the NES Classic, then they put out the SNES Classic, and we all kind of expected that to be an ongoing trend, but then they stopped it at the SNES. I wanted a Game Boy Classic, and now it looks like I'm getting one from a company that ironically, might actually do a better job at it than Nintendo themselves. A Game Boy Classic by Nintendo would likely be locked down to, you know, 20 or 30 games. Whereas with this thing, out of the box, it's going to run Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. With a special cartridge adapter, it'll also run other consoles like the Atari Lynx, the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and more is what the page says. So this thing is going to run a lot of different consoles. Now, it is important to point out that Analog has made similar promises that they didn't quite yet deliver with the Mega SG, which again is their HD Sega Genesis recreation, they promised a similar functionality with an adapter thing. You'd be able to play SC30 or uh, Game Gear games on it. But on their page, it still says coming 2019 for that adapter. So, you know, something to keep in mind. That being said, I do trust the company to deliver an amazing experience with the analog pocket, which is why I really want one. All the buttons are mappable, which is really cool. So this thing basically has four action, a D-pad, four action buttons. There's some buttons for operating the system at the bottom and then L and R trigger shoulder buttons at the back, all in that original Game Boy aesthetic and form factor that I absolutely love. So it's gonna be great to be able to play all this entire library of Game Boy games and more on something that looks this crisp. Like this looks like if Apple designed uh, the Game Boy. And say what you will about Apple, they're pretty good at design. Are used to anyway? I don't want to get into a whole Apple thing here. This thing charges over USB-C, which I love to see. It has a rechargeable battery, though, Strangely, they didn't say how big the battery is and that never bodes well. Usually when a product has really stellar battery life, this is a selling point that they wear front and center. And the fact that they are, they're admitting that makes me wonder if perhaps the, the cost of all of this tech that they crammed into this thing is that the battery life is not going to be that great. And there is a lot of tech, like I said, two FPGAs to run all these consoles. The screen is apparently beautiful. It has original cable link connectivity, which is really cool. And it's something that's not easily done through emulation. So that's a plus. There's going to be a dock that's going to be released with it. They haven't announced when or how much it's going to cost. But with it, you're gonna be able to dock your game, well, not Game Boy, your analog pocket and play these games on your TV. Not only that, but you can pair Bluetooth controllers to the dock 
to basically have a Switch-like experience with a Game Boy library, which is amazing. They also, you can also plug in a wired controller to the dock. In fact, up to two of them. I'm not sure how that's going to work on Game Boy games that traditionally you only have one controller for but we'll see how that works out. They didn't say if the dock charges the battery, which again, odd emission. You would imagine so, but I would have liked to see that stated clearly so that I know as it stands, perhaps it doesn't. And I saw people on social media saying things like, well, if the dock is used to output to HDMI, it has to charge because usually that's how docks work. That's not always the case. You can't output uh, to HDMI without the device being charged. Like the GPDXD has uh, an HDMI out and you can output without it being plugged in. So there's that. I expect it to have a little charger they can actually use to charge your, your analog pocket. It's going to be great if it works that way, but they didn't make it clear. It can also be used to make music via a built-in digital audio workstation, but I don't really care about that. So far, this thing looks absolutely great. The thing that people are really not loving, or at least people outside of the Game Boy collecting community, is the price. It's going to cost 200 bucks. and one thing that's important to mention too, at the bottom of the page, it says that the product is still under development and details could change, so there is a chance that it comes out and not all of these features that are being promised right now are available on the actual product. Something to keep in mind, perhaps even the price could change, who knows. But let's get back to that 200 bucks US plus shipping, handling, taxes or whatever. It's definitely not for everybody, I understand that. But it's a company that's putting out a recreation of the Game Boy that uses actual physical game cartridges in 2019 or rather in 2020 because that's when it's going to come out. I already knew coming in that this is not for everybody. This is for the collector, this is for people who have a whole bunch of Game Boys up on their walls and play a lot of Game Boy games still on actual hardware, like right here. This should put things into perspective. I have two modded Game Boys right here. This right here is my modded Game Boy Pocket. I love this because it's a Game Boy Pocket, so it's a lot more uh, portable than the original Game Boy, but it's in the style of the original Game Boy, right? With the, I'm um, breaking things here, with the, you know, purple buttons. And, and anyway, this model here only came out in Japan. I don't know why Nintendo does things like that. Like the Game Boy Lite, which I have here somewhere. This right here is the Game Boy Light. Uh, it's the only original Game Boy. Um, you can't really see because the off. Let me turn this off for a second here. Oh, geez, I turned off the monitor, so I can't really see what I'm shooting. But yeah, um, <laughs> I can't see anything. When you take into account the kind of experience that you get out of something like the analog pocket, meaning all of the consoles that it runs on a beautiful screen with a rechargeable battery, 200 bucks isn't that much because if you were to buy those systems separately and then mod them to have uh, an equivalent screen, it, it would actually cost you more than 200 bucks. So yes, to the casual observer, analog is crazy. This is an insane amount to charge for something like this. But to people who are in this community who have already spent similar amounts of money on products that only do about like half of what the analog pocket will be able to do, this thing cost me 250 bucks. So when you put all of that into perspective, $200 isn't really that much to ask for something like the analog pocket. I'm very, like I said, very excited about this product. This is something I want to get as soon as possible to do a full review here on the channel for you guys. I expect to love this thing. It looks beautiful. Like I said, it's the Game Boy I wanted as a kid. Something you can take with you wherever you go and you can also plug to your TV to play on the big screen and then you can just yank that thing out and then go up. Like that was, that's why I thought the Switch was such a brilliant concept when it was first announced. So to see that being applied to the Game Boy, I want it. 2020, cannot be here soon enough. But what do you think? Are you still unconvinced? Do you still think it's too expensive a price to pay to play basically old games? Like, and I get it. People are going to say like this, I can already see on the comments for this video, people are gonna say like, why buy that? Why spend 200 bucks on that? Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, it has a micro SD slot, which officially will not be able uh, to run ROMs but we know how these things go. They're gonna put this thing out and then like two weeks later, somebody hacked it and now it can run ROMs from the micro SD card. The micro SD card presumably is used for the whole music creation aspect of this device, but I give it, I give it two weeks before people, and I'm being generous, two weeks before people mod this thing and it can just run ROMs right off the micro SD. But like I was saying, what do you think? It's, is it still too much even when you take all of that into account? Do you want one? Do you think it's outrageous for me to want one? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit like, it helps the channel out like crazy. Follow me on social media. I'm very active on both Twitter and Instagram. Perhaps even some might say too active.
Oh hey, I almost forgot. 99 Vitas, my indie game based on my Brazilian gaming podcast of the same name, is now available on the Switch, which is my favorite way to play the game. 99 Vitas, which by the way means 99 lives in Portuguese, is a 16-bit inspired street brawler in the style of classics like Captain Commando or Streets of Rage. There are tons of unlockable characters, bonus levels, challenging boss fights, there's an online mode. We put a lot of thought and work into 99 Vitas, and I think you will find that it shows. I did my own voice acting and everything. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but the soundtrack on this thing alone is worth the price of admission, in my opinion. Just like every other Switch fan out there, we hate the so-called Switch tax, where indie games land on the eShop with a higher price point than their Steam versions. So 99 Vitas is actually cheaper on the Switch than on Steam right now, only $10. And hey, don't just take my word for it. There's a demo for you to try it free. So go to the eShop right now and download 99 Vitas. That's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.